Okay, sorry that last video cut me off, but let's go ahead and figure out based off the base that we're given what the height would be. So for the first one, if BC is our base, so here's BC, the height has to be perpendicular to it. So the only segment perpendicular to it is this AD right here. So segment AD would be the height that I would use to calculate the area if I'm using BC as my base. Now if I'm using AB as my base, so here's AB, and you'll notice that it's extended because for it to be, for, to create a segment that's perpendicular to this segment, but reaches to point C, the highest point, it would have to be outside of the triangle. So EC would be our base, segment EC if I'm using, or sorry, segment EC would be my height if I'm using AB as my base. Now if I'm using AC as my base, for the segment to be perpendicular, you'll notice it's also outside the triangle. And for it to be perpendicular and reach point B, I would have to use F segment FB as my, um, as my height. So you can see that when you're finding the area, you might be using different numbers, but you're still going to come up with the same area. Um, depending on which base you use. So most students, um, when you have your figure, there's usually just one um, segment that's drawn in there that's perpendicular, and that's to represent your height. So whatever it's perpendicular to, that's the segment that you would use for your base. So for example, on this next question, if this is your base, okay, if MP is your base, then SR would be your height because it's drawn in there and it's shown to be perpendicular. But what if we used OP as our base? So it says to draw in a corresponding height. Well, remember that it has to be perpendicular to it. So if you took like a sheet of paper and took the corner of it and lined it up, okay, then anything that's perpendicular to this would be the height. So for it to be perpendicular, it, this could be, this would need to be the height that I would use for this side to be the base. And then you'll notice that it doesn't intersect with MN, so I'm just going to have to extend MN so that it will intersect, oops, so I can find, that would be easier if I used a ruler. So you can see that this would be your height and that would be the base that you would use. All right, so let's look, here's a better picture of that. Let's look at number um, 10 in your notes and calculate the height of this parallelogram. Now, what you've got to be careful about is that you don't use the side, okay? So we have, what they've given us is that this angle is 60 degrees. And it says, hint, you'll need to use special right triangles. All right. All right, so we're going to use this 60-degree angle and create a height. And we know that the height has to be perpendicular, so it's a right angle. So what we've created is a 30, 60, 90. And what we've what we know is that that is the hypotenuse. So this would be the short leg, and the short leg would be half of that, which is two, and then the height, which is the long leg of the triangle, is two squared to three. So this is why we reviewed this at the very beginning. So now I know my base is six, and my height is two squared to three. So to find the area, I'm just going to multiply these together. Now remember when you're multiplying, that 6 only gets multiplied with the 2. So this is going to be 12 squared to 3, and then our units would be centimeters squared. Now, we're going to look at the relationship between the area of a rectangle and the area of a parallelogram. The, and then down here it just says, this is some new vocabulary, it just says the area of a parallelogram 
does not change between when it moves between parallel lines and this motion is called shearing so what that means is remember parallel lines are the same distance apart so as long as you do not change the um, distance between the parallel lines then that height is not going to change so if the distance between the parallel lines is two and your base is two and a half when you move this, your height is still 2 because the distance between your parallel lines is still the same as it was um, before because you didn't change the distance between your parallel lines. So this is what they call shearing. As you move this along, that height still remains the same. Okay. So as long as your base doesn't change and the distance between the parallel sides doesn't change, then it doesn't matter what those angles are going to be, your area is still going to be um, what it would be if you had a rectangle. So you can see this again, that height, because that distance between your parallel lines does not change. Now, when you have a triangle, okay, we know that the area of the triangle is half the base times the height okay and so when you compare that to this rectangle here you're going to get two and a half does that change no because the height which is the distance between the base and that highest point does not change as you move as you change that angle measure you can see that there so again that's the shearing Okay, your height is not changing, therefore the area is not changing. The base stays the same and the height stays the same. So the question on number 12 then says, what is the, um, it says to express the area of a parallelogram and of a triangle in terms of B and H. And we've talked about this on the slides prior. The area of your parallelogram is base times height and the area of your triangle is one half base times height or base times height divided by two and this just explains a little bit more of the shearing <coughs> it just says that the relationship is preserved between your parallel lines even though your shape is stretched okay and so therefore um, that height is going to stay the same so it says triangles can change from right to acute to obtuse or quadrilateral can change from a rectangle to a parallelogram but as long as the base and the height remain constant then the area is going to remain constant all right last thing um, we're going to find the perimeter and the area and then kind of compare the two and so it's a little hard to see in your notes um, so i'm going to leave this up because you can't see the grid lines on your note page but the base of this rectangle point a starts at one and it goes to six so that means that this is five units and then the height which is the distance um, between your sides is three and perimeter just means that you're adding up all the sides or you can you know multiply the base by two and the height by two and then add them together um, these make ten these make six, these sides make six, so this is going to be 16 units. And then your area is just base times height, and so that's going to be 15 units squared. Okay, now again, we're not changing, just like we said um, that shearing, the base is still five. Those that A and B are still, you can see in all three of these, are in that same point, one, one, and six, one but this is this side right here is what's changing it's moving it's not moving up or down it's just sliding that that shearing is occurring okay so we can already tell that the area of all three of these is going to be the same okay so the base is five and that height is three so that area is going to be 15 units squared same thing here base is five the height is three so that's going to be 15 units squared what changes is the perimeter okay 
And so let's see if we can calculate the perimeter. So if this is 2 and this is 3, so I'm going to kind of sketch that in. So this is 2 units, this is 3 units. We could do the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem. So let's see, 2 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. It's 4 plus 9. So c is the square root of 13. So this would be the square root of 13. And this would also be the square root of 13. Okay, so when I find the perimeter, and I add up all of these sides, what they did is they just use an approximate answer. So they didn't use the square root of 13. It would be 10 plus 2 squares of 13 would be the exact answer. Okay, but you can see if I go to the next slide that they just did the approximates. They rounded that. So that's about 17.2 units. Now with the next one, okay, you can already, I know you can see the answer there, but if I draw this in this side is um, 4 and this is 3 so it's a 3 4 so we know that this is 5 that makes that 5 that 5 and so we get 20 when we add all the sides together so what they want you to do is they want you to compare your area with your perimeter so they all have the same area okay but the perimeter the smallest perimeter is the rectangle and it will always be the rectangle so think about if you were trying to fence in like you have a dog and you wanted to make a fence for your dog it doesn't matter which of these you use as far as the area the dog's going to have the same amount of area in each one but if you're having to buy fencing material this will be the cheapest one because it, you, it the perimeter is the smallest so it's not going to cost you as much because you're not going to have to use as much material to um, to make that fence so to answer the question on number 13, it says when comparing parallelograms with the same base and height, the rectangle is the most efficient shape for enclosing a space. And then it says, think about a fenced area. A rectangle will enclose the same area as other parallelograms, but will always have the smallest perimeter. Okay, um, this says how many bases, different bases would you have if, if you were finding the area of a hexagon well a hexagon has six sides so you could potentially have six different bases um, when you're finding the area of your hexagon all right so your assignment is 20.1 and you're just finding the um, area in the perimeter um, you'll notice that there's you're they're using coordinates okay so um, make sure that you pay attention to how you plug those in over here. Um, the X is one answer and then the Y is the other answer.